Are you Julie? Good. Okay, Julie, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chair and Councillors, thank you for this opportunity to speak. And I want to say I find it a very great honor to see my name on the same list as all these wonderful people who've deputed today. It gives me new hope for my city that my fellow citizens care so deeply about our city and have such wonderful uh, feelings about its future. And I advise you, councillors, to listen to them carefully. Running for public office takes courage, and you've all had that courage. So I want you to continue to be brave, be courageous and honest enough to admit that you made some mistakes. Why don't you admit that there is no gravy train, that our city does not have an expenditure problem, but a revenue problem? And, <laughs> and councillors today have, in fact, admitted the revenue problem over and over by talking about uh, the lack of funding from other levels of government. I think all of those councillors you've referred to that should be honest enough to get up and say they disagree with the mayor when he says there isn't a revenue problem. Or... Who are we to believe? Are we to believe there is a revenue problem or to believe that there isn't? Are we to believe that the city is short 700 and something million dollars or is it 400 million dollars or are both those figures simply plucked out of thin air to scare us? Do we have more libraries than Tim Hortons or do we have more Tim Hortons than libraries? Stop throwing away these silly figures. How can we possibly believe anything you tell us if you can't even be honest with us on basic facts like that. <laughs> Another point is that there is no basis for evaluating any of the recommendations of the KPMG report because they exist in a vacuum. There is no standard against which to measure them. What the city needs is a good year of public discussion on the sort of city we want to build, the sort of city we want in 10 years, in 20 years, in 30 years. Only when we have that measuring gauge can we possibly make sensible decisions about what to keep and what to cut. But I will say one comment on what to keep. It's very widely acknowledged that one of the best indicators of a healthy and successful community isn't its total wealth, but how fairly that wealth is shared. Programs that improve the lives of the least privileged improve the lives of all of us. Thus, the, f the first measuring standard for all actions must be how they meet the needs of the least advantaged. The report on the survey and public meetings held this spring uh, where why the survey and public meetings held this spring were widely acknowledged to be highly skewed to produce a particular response. And in spite of this distorted survey, uh, your time the overwhelming your, majority... Th thank you very much. We've got a couple of questions for you now. Uh, Councillor Davis has a question and Councillor Vaughan has a question. Um, are you aware that the results from the consultation have not been at all considered by KPMG? Well... It's fairly obvious from the amount of the report I've read. I, it's hard to read because I keep coming across things that I find so appalling. I have to take some time off before <laughs> I can come back to it. I had the same trouble with the survey itself online. <laughs> um, secondly, um, do you think it would also be useful to have the core service review considered along with the user fee review, along with the service efficiency studies, along with information about our current surplus, uh, so that we looked at everything together before making decisions? I certainly agree with you there, but I think there's a step we need to take before those steps, and that is to imagine the sort okay. of world uh, we're creating for our grandchildren. Thank you very much. Great. The next thank questioner much. is uh, Councillor Vaughan. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know that you've been a very active participant in the waterfront uh, redevelopment exercises. One of the recommendations is to, is to get rid of the waterfront secretariat, which coordinates the three levels of government's uh, action on the waterfront. I just want your thoughts on that. Oh, it would be a total disaster. Why? It, because, what, no, I mean, one, one of the things that, that has slowed down waterfront progress is dealing with all the different agencies. The number of departments of the city that say no to everything um, the number of different interests that say no to everything. And I don't think any um, developer would ever want to 
take an interest in any site on the waterfront if they didn't have the good offices of the waterfront secretariat smoothing out those paths and negotiating, mediating. The it's other thing they've recommended is, is one of the ways to create efficiencies is to do less consultation with the public about planning issues. Your thoughts? I, I've often talked to the international designers that come in, have worked on our waterfront, who've had an unprecedented exposure to public consultation. Well, and I thank say, you very much. Uh, that's, uh, they all say every that, project is better because of the Sorry. Uh, next speaker is Wayne Dunn, followed by Madeline McDowell and Scott Harrison. Wayne Dunn, please. Wayne? Wayne's Dunn. Okay. <laughs> 